Well, hello there. I see you have come back for more. Well, this time, the story starts in the prehistoric time of 2001, when Mac OS, or OS X 10.0, came out, marking the first appearance of the Aqua theme. But more than that, it was the first Mac OS to be based on Unix, or rather FreeBSD, and the Next Step operating system, which was the operating system used on systems made by Next, which was the company Steve Jobs founded after being kicked from Apple's board. With the change to Unix came far superior security and stability. The change also brought with it a new rendering engine called Quartz, which was used up until the release of macOS Mojave when it changed to the Metal Renderer. Though the Quartz engine is still featured in the OS for compatibility's sake, but all of this new stuff bundled into 10.0 came at a high price, with an installed disk costing a crisp $130. It's kinda dark in here, wouldn't you say? Starting with macOS 10, this goober became a big part of macOS's branding. Often misinterpreted as just X, it is actually meant to be a Roman numeral 10, leading to OS 10 being pronounced OS X, as opposed to how it should be pronounced. With all that said though, Apple dropped the moniker X entirely with the release of macOS Sierra. You know, OS X has been with us as a name for over 15 years, and it served us so well. But as we look at it alongside its younger brethren, <laughs> something sticks out. We realize that there's a name that would be so much clearer and so much more elegant. And so, we're making it so. The name of the world's most advanced desktop operating system is now Mac OS. Would you look at that, it's a cheetah. Talking of cheetahs, macOS 10.0's codename was Cheetah, although it wasn't officially named after big cats yet, so it was just 10.0. At the time of release it was just kinda bad, with it being incomplete and very slow, even just using Finder caused it to crash and freeze up. Not to mention its utter lack of apps, with a lot of critics saying that it wasn't ready for release yet and still needed a lot more work. Though they acknowledged that it was a very solid base, the community also hailed it as a flawed, yet nevertheless very good first release. But a savior was soon to arrive. What are you doing? Uh, nothing? Hold on, is that, is that Windows? macOS 10.1, codenamed Puma, released on the 25th of September 2001. It mostly resolved the problems mentioned in 10.0, notably with it now being much more performant. It also added missing features. It was released as a free upgrade for 10.0 users, being $130 for everyone else. On January 2nd, 2002, it was announced that 10.1 would become the default installation on every Mac from then onward. Mac OS 10.2, or Jaguar, was the first to officially be branded with its codename, thus starting the Big Cat series of releases. With the release came an improvement to the Aqua UI and over 150 user-oriented features. It also introduced the Quartz Extreme Renderer, which added hardware rendering, utilizing the GPU as opposed to doing everything on the CPU. This boosted performance in a big way. Another smaller change was now when it booted it no longer showed the Happy Mac logo, but simply a grey Apple logo. Guess what? What? Mac OS 10.3 Panther just dropped, and it's got new features, notably the addition of Safari as the default browser as before it was Internet Explorer. With that, Finder saw some updates. The Aqua theme also saw refinements, as well as an extensive list of feature updates, such as the first implementation of Mission Control and File Vault. 10.3 also killed support for early G3 based Macs. April of 2005 brought us macOS Tiger, or 10.4. It boasted over 200 features, at least according to Apple. As with Panther, Tiger didn't support machines with under 256 megabytes of RAM and also required a Firewire port to run. Tiger brought with it Spotlight Search, or the search bar that appears when you hit Command and Space. It also introduced Dashboard, along with updates to most applications. Interestingly, the first Apple TV used a modified version of macOS Tiger as its operating system. Tiger was also the first to support Intel processors. 
The largest update to Mac OS X yet, at least according to Apple, with it including over 300 new features, Leopard supported both PowerPC and Intel, though it did drop support for G3 processors, with it requiring a G4 processor at a minimum clock of 867 MHz. The memory requirements also doubled to 512 megabytes. Mac OS 10.5 or Leopard featured yet another UI overhaul. It also saw the first implementation of Time Machine and Boot Camp. Leopard also featured full support for 64-bit applications. Who's that Pokemon? It's Mac OS Snow Leopard. All hail the best Mac OS ever, Snow Leopard or 10.6. Apple stated that rather than overhauling the front-end interface, they focused mainly on under-the-hood improvements, like improving stability and performance, causing Snow Leopard to be a really solid operating system. Finder got completely rewritten in Coco, which is an object-oriented programming language made by Apple. Safari also saw a major overhaul. The memory requirements once again doubled to 1 gigabyte, as well as only supporting Intel but allowing use of PowerPC apps with Rosetta. Two things died with the release of Mac OS Lion, or OS X Lion. Firstly, the Mac OS name being replaced with OS X, and also, most saddening of all, it didn't feature an intro video like literally every Mac OS version prior to it. The GUI also saw some minor changes inspired by iOS. It was also the first Mac OS to feature a launch pad, and it also saw major refinements to the multi-touch gestures Mac OS is known for. Rosetta was also removed, making the use of PowerPC apps impossible, but by 2011 most apps had already been ported. Mac OS Mountain Lion was released on July 25th, 2012. It was the start of Mac OS's yearly release cycle. It also implemented new apps like iMessage, Calendar, then named iCal, and Reminders. It integrated iCloud more heavily, now allowing you to store iWork documents in iCloud. Mountain Lion was also the first to be distributed over the App Store. Mac OS 10.9 Mavericks was the first Mac OS to not be named after big cats, instead moving to the current naming scheme of places in California. Mavericks was a free upgrade to anyone on Snow Leopard or later. It also saw the addition of previously iOS-only apps, like Maps and iBooks. There were a lot of UI improvements, but similar to Snow Leopard, it also mostly focused on under-the-hood changes. Mac OS 10.10 .10 or Yosemite featured the death of skeuomorphism, having a similar style to iOS 7, featuring translucency and saturated colors. The biggest addition of Yosemite was the new handoff feature where you, where you could answer calls and send iMessages from your Mac. Yosemite also added the Photos app, which replaced iPhoto. El Capitan was the next location Apple's crack team visited. It's another year and time for another name. And so we collected our crack product marketing team, <laughs> shoved them in their VW minibus, and set them out on the road. Now, they first ventured south, discovering OS X Oxnard. <laughs> now, this wasn't quite right, but undeterred, they headed east, landing at OS X Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> Still, we hadn't quite hit the mark, so they boldly ventured north, landing at OS X <laughs> Weed. Similar to Snow Leopard, Apple focused on refining the Mac OS experience and improving performance. Apple Maps and Notes both saw improvements to their GUI. El Capitan also changed to the San Francisco font, along with Apple introducing the Metal Renderer, which according to Apple boosts performance by up to 50%, but only on Macs from 2012 onwards. There isn't really much to talk about with Mac OS 10.12 Sierra, as the only change from El Capitan was the addition of Siri and a preview of the new file system APFS. Oh, and in response to users complaining about unsatisfactory battery life, they removed the battery time remaining info that used to appear when you clicked on the battery icon. 
Mac OS High Sierra on release had a major security bug that allowed you to gain super user access by simply logging in with the username root and leaving the password blank and bam you're in. Similar to the last few releases, it was mostly just refinements with very few UI overhauls. The biggest update was the switch to APFS from HFS Plus, which they had been using since 1998. APFS boosted performance on SSDs. MacOS Mojave introduced the long-awaited inclusion of system-wide dark mode. It was the first macOS to require a metal-capable GPU, completely dropping support for anything prior to 2012. A few questionably new apps, as they were just ported from iOS, were added such as Apple News, Stocks, Voice Memos, and Home. It also changed the way you received updates, with it sort of moving from the App Store to a panel within the Settings app that would then redirect you back to the App Store to download the update. Next, let's talk about Mac OS. macOS 10.15 Catalina was released on October 7th, 2019. It split up iTunes into four separate apps, namely Music, Podcasts, TV, and Books, with management of iOS devices being moved to Finder. Find My Mac and Find My Friends were merged into one app called Find My. Voice Memos 2.1 also released with Catalina. Most annoying of all, for older applications was the full removal of 32-bit support. Another addition was the ability to use an iPad as a separate monitor with the sidecar feature. <laughs> Mac OS 10.16, uh, sorry, I mean Mac OS 11 Big Sur, was the first Mac OS since 2001 to majorly increase the system version number, though it references both 10.16 and 11 in system files. The public betas bricked a couple of people's machines which they couldn't fix because the COVID pandemic prevented them from going to an Apple store. But one of the more major changes was the support for ARM because of the release of the M1 chip. Mac OS Big Sur also saw a change in visual style, with everything becoming rounded. Mac OS 12 Monterey was announced at WWDC 2021. It introduced universal control, focus modes, and the Shortcuts app, which will eventually take over the role of Automator. Safari was also fully redesigned, along with FaceTime getting numerous improvements. But most heartbreaking of all was the breaking of an eight-year-long tradition of using a nature-themed background, with Apple instead going for an abstract interpretation of the Monterey Canyon. Unfulfilled by this, a trio of friends did what Apple didn't and it looks like this. It's also dynamic, so it changes as the time changes on your Mac. I recommend you check out their video about it. Ventura and on to the next macOS. macOS 13 Ventura was announced at WWDC 2022. It came with a full redesign of the System Preferences app, renamed to System Settings. The redesign made it more iOS-like. It featured multiple new apps like a native weather app and a clock app, as well as a completely new app called FreeRoam, which is just a whiteboard. It also added the functionality to use your iPhone as a webcam using Continuity Camera. Siri also saw a redesign to look to look more like Siri on iOS 14. On the backend side, Metal 3 was added, which added support for spatial images, temporal image upscaling, which means it renders a frame at a lower resolution and then upscales it. Other than that, they add lockdown mode to reduce the risk of cyber attacks. <laughs> MacOS Sonoma was announced at WWDC 2023. It featured completely revamped widgets that could be placed anywhere on the desktop. They also introduced a game mode for deranged individuals that game on a Mac. With game mode enabled, it gives games more allowed usage of GPU and CPU resources. Some new design decisions were implemented making the spotlight search and application icons even more rounded, as well as animations for notifications and lock screen being made smoother. Moving wallpapers on the lock screen slowed down as you logged in and became the wallpaper. 
The newly released macOS Sequoia was announced in June of this year. It introduces Apple Intelligence, features with a complete redesign of Siri, and system-wide integration of ChatGPT 4.0, ChatGPT being the power behind Apple Intelligence. It also added iPhone mirroring and a new password manager app for faster autofill and window tiling which is just the window snapping feature from Windows. Well there you have it, the history of every single macOS version from 2001 to 2024. I will be releasing macOS explained videos every time a new macOS releases. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, drop a like, subscribe and all the rest and have a great day.